John Hiller, who came out of the bullpen to get his first start last Wednesday at Texas, only the second start since 1972 for him, is getting his second start of this season here tonight against the potent California Angels. Hiller, winner once and loser four times. All those decisions in relief this year. All right, check that. The last one was the defeated Texas. Ready to go. And here for the play-by-play, -play, Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul. Here we go. And Torres to lead it off. Flores, and he takes the ball outside, ball one. Gil Flores, right-handed batting outfielder. Wind up by Hiller. He delivers. There's a bunt attempt, and it's missed by Flores, and the count is even one and one. Flores batting 345. He's in 14 games. Young man from Puerto Rico, 24 years old. Had his uh, early career hampered by injuries. Last year at Salt Lake, most of the year. Takes the ball in too close. Two and one, the count on Flores. F L O R E S. Hiller, ready to work. And delivers. Here's a sky again about the knees. The fastball. Larry Barnett getting a dispute from the leadoff man Flores about that call. 2-2 two -two the count on him. Flores had a shoulder separation last year. He batted 323 though, over the whole year at Salt Lake. Swings and a bounding ball to first base. Thompson knocks it down, picks it up, touches first base, the head of the batter Flores, and there's one away. Jerry Remy, the very fine uh, second baseman, stepping in now. R-E-M-Y is hitting 287. Young man from Massachusetts. He batted 263 last season. This is the first look the Tigers have had at the Angels. Didn't even see him in spring training because they trained on the separate coasts. Here's the ball outside on Remy, ball one. Hiller delivers, and the left-hand batter takes an outside pitch again. 2-0, oh, the count on Jerry Remy. Jerry, another one, the age of 24. Mankowski in close on him. There's a strike call. Fastball across, 2-1 and one on Remy. One out, nobody on. The game has just started at Tiger Stadium. The lights are on. There's daylight left around here, however, and a good bit of it. Now uh, Hiller winds and pitches. Remy swings. A pop-up hit into short left field going back for Riza. The shortstop. Here's Kemp behind him, and the left fielder Kemp makes a catch. Either one going to take on that one. Dave Chalk will be the batter now, hitting 333, the third baseman in 36 games. The Angels have won nine of their last 13 and uh, moved up to fourth place. They were seven games under 500 when they started that move, and now they're two under. Here's the motion, and the pitch hits a ball high on chalk. University of Texas product. Right-handed batting infielder. He choked that bat just a little bit. The 1-0 pitch swung on and hit high in the air into the infield. Verizer and Fuentes are there. Fuentes back of the mound, and he has it for the out. They go down one, two, three in the California first. And at the end of a half inning, the Angels nothing. The Tigers are coming to bat. Well, the two Tiger farm teams that played uh, last night both had to go into overtime, and both were winners in extra innings down in the Superdome in New Orleans. Evansville, for the second game in a row, got a game-winning home run from catcher Lance Parrish. Uh, Lance hit a solo homer to give the triplets a 10-inning, 9-8 victory over New Orleans. But uh, John Valley has kept him in the ball game with a pair of home runs and five RBIs. Evansville is now 12 and, or rather, 21 and 16 on the year, and they're in second place in the Eastern Division of the American Association. Montgomery was rained out of their ball game at Jacksonville. The Rebels are 26 and 15, and they rest in first place in their Western Division of the Southern League. Down in the Florida State League, Lakeland went 16 innings before defeating Coco 5 to 2. Lakeland is in uh, first place in the Northern Division with a 23 and 17 record in the Florida State League. a baseball harder than anybody in the major league getting ready to pitch now to the Tigers in their first inning. The game is scoreless. 
He has a 9-4 lifetime mark against the Tigers. He was 6-4 and four against the entire league last year. He won two and lost none against the Tigers last season. First man to face him will be Phil Mankowski on the left-hand batting third baseman. Phil keeping that average up there. He's batting 321 with one home run and 10 RBI. Like to send Tiger get well, which is to Janine Hand. The Saratoga Hospital. We hope she's up and at him real soon. No score first inning. Nolan Ryan, the young man from Texas, pitching to Phil Mankowski. And there's that fastball to tie away ball one. Terry Humphrey, the former Tiger, is doing the catching. Chalk at third, Gritch at short, Remy at second, and Ron Jackson at first base. Now Ryan wheels and delivers. Here's a ball in close. That was a breaking pitch. In the outfield, they've got uh, Rudy in left, Flores and Setter and Bonds in right. Now Ryan into action pitches. It is a ball high, 3 and 0 on Mankowski. from the limbers and a strike is called. He hit the inside corner with that one. One of the great strikeout pitches in baseball history, Ryan. He holds the seasonal record, 383 strikeouts in one year. Here's a strike called. He got a fastball through. Three and two. the other great strikeout pitches in baseball history. Rube Waddell, Bob Feller, Sandy Koufax. And he's beaten them all. Here's the 3-2 delivery. Swing a line shot. Base hit. Set a field. Fastball up in the letters and Mankowski just gave a little tap and hit it over the infield for a single. Good bat control he has, Paul. Yes, Phil uh, getting his first taste of Nolan Ryan pitching in this ball game tonight. And he just simply swung it very easily, just met the ball, and Ryan uh, provides so much momentum anyway. Here's Tito Fuente stepping in. He'd be batting left-handed now, hitting 311. This will be uh, Tito's 37th Tiger game. Man out first, nobody out. Tigers at bat first inning, the game scores. The Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Set by Ryan. Fuentes uh, waiting. This will be his uh, first look at this pitcher. Except uh, perhaps an exhibition contest. And he takes a strike. Let her high fastball inside corner. Ryan has fanned as many as 19 in one game. He did that in an 11-inning game against Boston back in uh, 74. There's a cut and a miss. One of the great games Nolan Ryan pitched was right here. You remember when uh, he was pitching his second no-hitter of the season and struck out a total of 17 Tigers. That was in 73. He has four no-hitters in his career. There's a ball in close. One and two. He and Koufax uh, share the record for that. One and two, the count on Fuentes. Uh, nobody down, a man at first base. Ryan sets and delivers. He swings and misses. Looks like he's breaking ball down around the ankles, and the Fuentes went for a bad pitch. One on, one out, and Rusty Staub will bat next. Rusty, the Tigers' designated batter. Hitting at a 242 clip. Year, these two teams are, were six and six against each other. Tigers won four out of six here. The Angels won four out of six out in Anaheim. It's a strike call at leather high fastball blazing in from Nolan Ryan. Ryan delivers. It's a strike inside corner. That one in above the knees. Two strikes to count on him. Out feeling is straight up on Rusty Staub. Last time out, Ryan uh, beat the Twins 5-3 to three and struck out 12. He delivers a curve low, 1-2. and two. The 
struck out Trump or Ryan uh, tried to reckon Sam McDowell. 74 games in uh, which he has fanned uh, 10 or more. Here's the pitch. It's a ball in close. Ooh, that was almost there. 2-2, two -two, the count on stop. He's got that wicked breaking ball to go with that fastball. Just an unbeatable combination. When he pitched that no-hitter, too, he had a real good slow curve working for him that Sunday afternoon. Here's a 2-2 two -two pitch. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. Humphreys throw to second. He is eight at second base. It's a strikeout, and Mankowski has a stolen base. Two down, and now Kemp will be the batter. Young man from the University of Southern California coming up now to face to Nolan Ryan. Back where you got three straight Californians hitting uh, here against California. All left-hand batters, all youngsters, 22, 22, and uh, 24 years old. Kemp, Thompson, and Corcoran. And all not very far from where the Angels are based. Same neighborhood. Two out, a man at second base. Kemp at the plate. He's hitting 300 now, right on the nose. Six home runs, 23 runs batted in for Steve. Curve over for a strike. Well, he started him off with a breaking pitch. And uh, Kemp took it all the way for a strike call. Now the set by Ryan. He turns and throws to second. Back in time is the runner Mankowski. Bobby Gritch ducking behind him and taking a low throw. A little bit to the right field side of the bag. Seems strange to see Gritch at shortstop. Played it before, but I think he would probably prefer second base. Here's the pitch. It's a strike on the inside corner. That was Ryan's fastball. So the last uh, few hitters, he's been getting ahead. He got behind on Mankowski and then uh, got to a 3-2 count. Mankowski single. But on Fuentes and Staub, he worked on them pretty good with two quick strikes. Now he's got two strikes on Kemp. Let's see what it'll give him. It's been a curve and a fastball so far. Fastball very wide. He wasted that one. High and away on Steve. Only one year of the minors to Steve Kemp, and uh, he's right up here hitting that big league pitching. Stand very near the plate, waits on a one-two serve from Ryan. It's a breaking ball low, gets by Humphrey. Mankowski will make it easy to third. That ball hit in the dirt, uh, right near the feet of Kemp in the batter's box. Humphrey uh, blocked it a little bit to his right. It'll be a wild pitch. Peter Gammons of Sports Illustrated is here at Tiger Stadium tonight. He's come in to do a story on Mark Fidrich. Man out third now, two out, no score. First inning at Tiger Stadium. Thompson waiting on deck. Kemp the batter against Nolan Ryan. Here's the wind now by the California right-hander. The pitch is a strike. God, he struck him out. Got a curve on the inside corner. And Kemp strikes out. So there's a single, a stolen base on a wild pitch, but three strikeouts along the way. No runs, one hit, no errors. And one man left on base at the end of one. California nothing, Detroit nothing. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating Chrysler Plymouth Dealer. Provided they're accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right. And there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 Bat Boys will be picked on June the 2nd. Right, Katie? Right. 22 winners. One from each Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger Iron-On patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So, kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th. And sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Shouldn't that be that person? Well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. 
It's difficult in this busy world to keep up with everything that transpires on a given day, but we at WJR News summarize your world for you evenings at 6. This is Jennifer Moore. Join us. No score second inning. It'll be Joe Rudy to lead it off of the Angels, considered uh, as one of the outstanding all-round players in the American League. Of the former Oakland A, now the property of California. Thanks to the heavy shelling out of the old cowboy Gene Autry. Rudy has reached the ripe old baseball age of 30 and uh, still moving along in great style. Batting 259 this season, he takes the strike on the outside corner. 38 RBIs for Rudy and eight home runs. First played by the Kansas City A's and then uh, moved with them to Oakland finally. There's a swing and a miss on a dipping left-hand curve by Ellers. Strike two on Joe Rudy. One of the several ball players is taking the weightlifting. Help to condition him. Here's a pitch. He swings and fouls it away. This one will be back toward the screen. And then right down below. Strike two on Joe. Seattle leads Cleveland one to nothing at the end of one. Milwaukee and Baltimore, no score. They've completed two. Montreal beats the Cubs today, five to four, extra inning. Pittsburgh leading the Mets at the end of two. It's Pittsburgh, a one to nothing. No other scores yet. Hiller winds, delivers. Rudy swings, fly ball. Hit into short right center. Here comes Stanley. Won't get there. Drops in front of him. And Rudy has the first hit for the Angels. Little Texas League single dropping into right center field. That'll bring up Bobby Bonds, hitting 274, eight home runs and 24 RBIs for Bobby. Got his start with the Giants and had a fine career there. They traded him to the Yankees in 75. He stayed there one season and then went to California. Bobby, uh, troubled by injuries last year, had a hand operation finally in August. Fellow hits with power, and he has fine running speed. Bobby Bonds, he swings and misses on the Hiller changeup. Bob Dab is a professional boxer. Swing, another looper, hit the right field, may drop in, and here comes Cochran, can't get it. Drops the ball after picking it up, he fires it back at the Puentes. He dropped it on one hop, and... Two singles very much alike. Rudy and Bonds have hit a couple of little Texas leaguers. And here's Don Baylor, who's hit a lot more than Texas leaguers in this ballpark. You remember a few of those, don't you, Paul Carey? Oh, you bet. <laughs> this guy uh, has great power. He's not hitting all that well so far for the Angels. He's been a little disgruntled over the fact that he's been having to play the role of the DH. But he's got that power and speed. Batting 2-0-3. Uh, seven home runs for Baylor, 19 runs better than former Baltimore Orioles. And he takes a strike call. Baltimore dealt him off to uh, Oakland last year where he hit the 247 and had 15 homers. Infield and double play depth. Hiller in uh, early trouble now. Two men on and nobody down. No score, second inning. Set to kick the pitch. He swings and fouls it on the screen. Got that fastball in on the hand from John. Baylor got started early in baseball. He broke into the age of 18. He's still only 27. And he's been around since 67. Baltimore kept him in the minors quite a bit because of all the talent they had in outfield and at first base. Now the set, the pitch, he starts the bunt and takes the ball outside. California broadcast team across the way. A couple of Michiganders uh, beaming it out for California. Dick Inberg and Al Wisk. Don Drysdale taking a few days off. Here's the set now by the Tiger left-hander Hiller. High foul fly. May go out of play. Thompson coming over near the seat. He has the room, but he overruns the ball. It was about uh, three or four yards away from the barrier. Not real high, and uh, Thompson ran under it, went to the fence, and then he couldn't go back and retreat. Oh, 
it falls in safely a foul fly one and two the count on Baylor. like uh, Barnes in that he not only has power but he has good running speed. Well the outfield straight up on Don and Hill has got to go to work on him again. John sets and delivers. Here's a little pop foul over toward first base. Here's Thompson. He has it for the out. Check swing foul ball and Thompson had a little trouble getting around the uh, runner at first base uh, Bobby Barnes but he made it over there in foul territory to make the catch. Now we'll see Ron Jackson come to bat, the right-hand batting first baseman from Bessemer, Alabama. Jackson hitting 250 in 21 games, another big, husky, strong hitter. Just passed his 24th birthday about a week or two ago. He's been up with the Californians a couple of times. Swings and misses on the hill of changeup. Jackson uh, last year and the year before was uh, at both Salt Lake and at California. Finally made it last year as a regular with the Angel. Getting into 127 games. They've had him at third base, the outfield, first base. He swings and misses. Breaking ball and Hiller took a little off that one too. bit of a breeze uh, blowing out uh, from the right field corner toward the left. Coming out of the south to the southeast. Hiller checks his time with his catcher milk made. No score. Here's the pitch. Watch out. In uh, close and he backed up and lost his helmet. Del Crandall is the first base coach. Dave Garcia coaches the third. Dave was at Cleveland, you remember, coaching and Crandall was the manager at Milwaukee. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball low. Good stop by May. He short hop one that hit in front of the plate. 2-2. Two -two. Crandall spent all last year at Salinas, I believe, in the California State League. Out there in his home territory. Well, uh, Garcia from out that way, too. Now waiting on a 2-2 pitch is Jackson. He swings and fouls it away. Down the right field side, it'll reach the seat. The stories out of Cleveland concerning the imminent uh, dismissal, rumored, from well, Frank Robinson, uh, several admits, mentioned the fact that Garcia was off of the job and turned it down. He didn't want to leave California or leave the coaching ring. Hiller, check it his sign. It's a 2-2 pitch again to Jackson. Ron swings to the bounding ball. Hit up the middle. Base hit. That'll get a run in probably. Rudy rounding third coming home. Bond takes third on the single and California moves in front one to nothing. That was a hard one hopper to the glove side of Verizza. He couldn't get over towards second to stop it and it got through for a single. Man on first, man on third. One run in, one man down and Bobby Gritch the batter. One nothing California. Gritch hitting 267, five home runs and 17 RBI. That was the first well hit ball off Hiller tonight. Yep, the other two were just a couple of little Texas leaguers that set the table for Ron Jackson. The Tigers will keep their infield and double play depth in this situation. One nothing California. Gritch with that short stroke of his at the plate takes the ball in too close. Bobby uh, back in the state where he grew up, although he was born in uh, Muskegon, Michigan. Thompson holding on the back with Jackson at first base, one nothing Angel. Here's a ball outside from Hiller, two and zero the count. Tells you a little bit about the power and speed of this Angel lineup when they've got a Gritch batting in the eighth position. Mm, pretty indicative. Hiller ready, delivers. Here's a fly ball at the center. About medium depth. Uh, Stanley comes in a little bit, makes a catch. Here's the tag at third. And Bonds is coming home to score. The ball gets by Fuentes. Jackson breaks the second throw to Verizon. Not in time. Two to nothing, California. And now they've got a man at second and two outs. So Gritch will get a sacrifice on the fly to Stanley. And then Stanley will be charged with an error. And as the uh, ball 
uh, got away from the infield. And here is the former Tiger, Terry Humphrey, who's won himself a regular job out there in California. Batting 227, he's been in 32 games. He's the catcher. Here's a strike called on Terry, the lean man from Oklahoma. Killer pitches and Humphrey looks at a ball low. Ron Jackson on second, two out, California two tights, nothing. Swing and a tip to the mid of May. Angels two runs and three hits coming in this inning. Here's the set by Hiller. The left-hander kicks and deals. Here's a bounding ball to short. But Riser short hops it. The throw to Thompson is in time, and the side retires. However, the Californians pick up a couple. Two runs, three hits, one error, one man left. At the end of an inning and a half, California two to short nothing. Hazy, hot conditions will hold through the week as the WJR weather forecast from Mal Sillers for Greater Detroit reads fair to partly cloudy with widely scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers through Thursday. Low temperature tonight, 62 to 65. Tomorrow's high and Thursday as well, 86 to 89 degrees. Right now, winds are southerly at 7. Humidity is 53%. And under partly cloudy skies, it's 80 degrees at Detroit's Metro Airport. In town, 80 and mostly clear at Detroit City Airport. Pontiac reporting in with 77. It's 78 and mostly clear in Ipsy. And Lansing has clear and 79 degrees. Repeating again at 8.30, it's mostly clear and 80 degrees at Detroit's Metro Airport. And MEP reporting no trouble at all on any freeway or Detroit area surface street. From Ty Cobb to Mark Fidrich, Radio 76 has been part of it all. It's sports information you've come to expect from WJR Detroit. Let's pause briefly for the station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. You're just three hours away from the Captain Jay Roberts on Radio 76 at 11.30 tonight on America's great radio station, WJR. Jason Thompson will lead it off against the Nolan Ryan now, the flamethrower from California. Thompson hitting 268. He has 27 RBI as a team leader. And he also leads in home runs at seven. delivers and Jason takes a high hard one very wide ball one here's a curve uh, dipping down around the feet 2-0 oh, the count on Jason tomorrow night is Irish American night you'll have some colorful pregame ceremonies beginning at 730 the game itself gets underway at 8 o'clock. It'll be Roberts against Tanana. We hope you'll be out for that one. Now the 2-0 delivery. It's a ball very high. 3-0 and on Jason Thompson. Repeat the announcement we made a little bit earlier that Vern Rule has been placed on the 21-day disabled list. He has a little stiffness in his right shoulder. Fidrich comes on the active list. There's a ball outside. He walked him on four pitches. And the second Tiger runner, the first one was Mankowski, who let off the first inning with a single. And now Tim Cochran, another Californian stepping up, batting 467 at 7 for 15. One home run and four runs better than. Tim getting a nice uh, hand from the home folks here in his first appearance against them. Not against them, in front of them. <laughs> on the mound, pitching to Corcoran. Here's the pitch. He takes the ball outside, and Humphrey wants a little comfort. Are they going to 
pass out the all-star ballots here at Tiger Stadium, so you folks uh, better cast your ballots. Five Tigers are on that computer punch card ballot this year. LaFleur, May, Staub, Thompson, and Rodriguez. Now the conference over. Corcoran back in the batter's box. 1-0 to count on him. Ryan sets and pitches. It's a strike call. Let her high fastball. Incidentally, had a little talk with uh, Rodriguez before the ball game. Aurelio says he's working out now, taking batting practice, stealing practice, running, uh, doing everything to get ready and get back in the lineup. Here's the 1-1 delivery, and Tim swings and misses on the curve. Aurelio was out here early today getting a lot of uh, work out of third base. They were hitting a lot of ground balls at him. Seemed to be uh, treating the leg a little gingerly, perhaps. Well, it'll take a little time. One and two, the count on Tim. Ryan to the set position pitches. There's the fastball high and outside. Two, two, the count on Corcoran. We've got a report now from New York. Boston leads the Yankees two to one at the end of one at Yankee Stadium. There's a curve. It is a little bit high. It's full count on Tim Corcoran. Bryant's going to that curve quite a bit here in the early inning. Now, Tim uh, sets himself in there. He stands very deep in the batter's box. Full count pitch. Swung on it high in the air to left field. Not deep at all. Rudy is under it. Waiting, waiting, and it's in his glove for the out. Thompson retreats to first base. Here's Milt May stepping up. The Tigers catcher with a 262 average. Milt has three home runs. He's driven in 13 runs. After Dave Robertson, Tanana, duel uh, tomorrow night. It'll be an off day for the Tigers. On Friday, Mark Fenrich comes back to action. He'll be pitching against Glenn Abbott on Demolay night. The Tigers versus Seattle. Saturday, it'll be Rosma against Paul. And Sunday, Arroyo against Undecided. Tiger Day Saturday, Autograph Day Sunday. May look at a strike call from Nolan Ryan. Thompson, not much of a lead at first base. Jackson holds with him. The fastball is in too close on Milk May. One and one to count on Milk. California picked up two in the second. They lead the Tigers 2 nothing with the Tigers trying to get back in the second inning. May swings and misses. He took a big ripple. And the fastball came in right through the letters. Two of the hitters who led the hitting against California not in the lineup today for the Tigers. Here's a foul back on the screen. One and two on May. Those two are LaFleur and uh, Rodriguez. Rusty Staub was another one of the uh, leaders last year against California pitching only. Hope you'll be out here tomorrow night. Fun at the ballpark. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul. It'll reach the seat back a third. That's the trouble with having only a two-game series with the Angels and a day off before. You figure your odds are you're going to get Tanana and Ryan. Three to four game series so you can spread it around a little bit. That's a potent one two punch too to run up against. Now May digging in waiting on another one two serve from Nolan. Here it is. He takes a high fastball. That one seemed to sail a little bit for him. Two two the count on May. Doesn't appear that Ryan has really found his rhythm yet in this game. Uh, he's struggling a little bit, and he seems to be getting his curveball over better than the fast stuff. Mm -hmm. Now the 2-2 delivery. There's his curve. It missed the mark. Full count. He's thrown a lot of pitches here in the early part of the game. He had an arm operation in late 75, September 75. And uh, 76 was not an outstanding year for Nolan, not by his standards. Field around the right on May. Almost no breeze right now. Here's the pitch. He takes a walk. He didn't get the curve in that time. 
And the Tigers have two runners, both on uh, bases on ball. Mickey Stanley, veteran set of fielder, getting a nice round of applause. Mick batting 265. One of the most popular of the Tigers, Mickey Stanley. Jason Thompson on second, Milk May on first. Tigers trail by two, two nothing in the second inning. And the pitch, he takes the ball outside. That was a fastball, high and away. Good turnout in the breaches tonight. You come out and see a baseball game for a dollar and a half. That's hard to beat. A cup of coffee costs so much that much now. <laughs> Here's a strike call. A fastball in above the knees. Get about a fourth of a shrimp cocktail for that. <laughs> Two-nothing. Angels lead the Tigers in the second inning. Stanley waits. The 1-1 pitch is outside. Ryan going to that fastball a lot now. 2-1 the count on Mickey. Tigers did some lusty hitting in Comiskey Park when they swept that series with Chicago. They'd like to continue that hitting pace. Stanley at the plate. 2-1 pitch. Swing and a top foul. He just Kick that one off the mid of uh, Humphrey. And the count on Mickey, 2-2. Two -two. Outfield uh, plays Stanley not to be able to get around on Ryan. Yeah, they've got uh, Flores over there in right center. See what he'll give him on 2-2 now with one out and two on. Two-nothing California leading in the second. Ryan takes his time. Mickey digging and waiting. Here it comes. He takes a strike, a fastball across. Hit that outside corner. That is a really tough pitch. Right-hander against the right-hander. He gets that fastball on the outside corner. Just a little bit above the knee. Not too much you can do. That's the fourth strikeout. For Ryan, he's retired five men and fanned four of them. Here's Tommy Bariza with two on and two out. Tommy batting 160. This is his 25th game. Takes a wide one, ball one. Dick Trzewski coaching at first. Fred Hatfield, the third base coach for the Tigers. Verizon looks at a ball outside, two at O. Another fastball. Now Seattle and Cleveland are tied. They're 2-2 at the end of three. Baltimore second lead over Milwaukee at Baltimore. one nothing. They've completed three over there. Now the 2-0 pitch, and Verizon takes a strike outside corner. Tiger fans trying to clap up a little rally here in the second inning with the Tigers trailing 2-0. the set by Nolan Ryan the right hand fires it's a fastball swung on popped in the air to short left Rudy is there he's waiting he has it in the side retired the Tigers get two walks and that's all no runs no hits no errors two are left and at the end of two California two Detroit nothing we got together to do it better and that's what we did It really feels good. And that's the way it feels when the Marathon Oil Company. Because Marathon isn't just a name. It's a lot of people who got together. Because they think doing it better is the only way to do it. And if you ask me, I think they're absolutely right. We got together to do it better. That's what we did. Marathon Oil 
company. We got together to do it better. And we did. Jay Roberts here to remind you that I stay up late to provide a little night music and conversation on a program called Night Flight 76. Join me evenings at 11.30 on WJR. Yo, Flora, so lead off, man. Coming up now to start things in the third against John Hiller. California picked up a couple in the second. That's the difference in the game. They had singles by Rudy and Bonds. Single by Jackson and a sacrifice fly by Gritch. Got the second run home. Hiller delivers, and the Flores looks at a curve over. Strike one. He bounced unassisted at Thompson the first time at bat. Here's a pitch at Law. One and one to count on him. Hiller deals in the dirt, and the count is two and one. John Rock kicks the livers. Little pop fly back toward short. Verizon's there. He has it. And that's one away. Flores popping to Tommy Verizon. Jerry Remy will be the batter. Well, John Sanderson is a great Tiger fan, has been, and still is. Been in the hospital for a long, long time. Still rooting for the Tigers. We send our very best to him. He's at St. Joseph's of Mount Clemens. Here's the ball low. Ball one. Remy, a very fine competitor and uh, highly regarded all around the league. He flied to left his first trip. Swings and misses on a Hiller curve, one and one. Don't forget the same two teams go at each other tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Hope you'll be out with us. Bonding ball to first. Thompson very wide at the bag. Has it raced for the bag. Won by Jason. Remy is out to Jason Thompson unassisted. Two up and two away. Here's Dave Chalk. Dave pops to second base. His only trip. A strike called a curve across. Chalk leaning and waiting. Right hand batter takes a strike on the outside corner. Two strikes to count on him. California two, Detroit nothing. The Angels are batting in the third, the first of a two game set. First look, these two teams have had at each other this year. He takes a half cut, but it's ruled a ball. He didn't go over. Umpire Barnett checking with Jim Evans at first. He says, you're right. He didn't go across. Still a one-two count on Dave Chalk. Here it is. Swing and a bounding foul. It's down past the coach, Dave Garcia. Dave managed in the Mexican ball. Same league that uh, Rodriguez has often played in the wintertime. Here's a high pop-up over back of Mankowski, Verizer. Is in left field. Here comes Kemp behind him, and Verizza makes the catch for the out. They go down one, two, three in the third. Here come the Tigers to bat in the last half. The third. It is California two, Detroit nothing. When it comes to racing, motorcycle champions have one thing in common. Champion spark plugs. Last year, for instance, champions sparked all 16 major U.S. and world motorcycle championships, including motocross and road racing. Is it any wonder when most factory teams go racing, champion spark plugs go along? So when your bike needs new plugs, do what racers around the world do. Fill her up with champions.
Craig is coming about against Nolan Ryan. It is two nothing Angels. Two runs, three hits for California. No runs, one hit for the Tigers. And here's the man who's had the only hit, Mankowski. He'll be leading off in the Tiger third against Ryan. Ryan has uh, walked two. And he's picked up four strikeouts in the first two innings. On the left hand batting, Mankowski had a 3-2 pitch for a single into center field the first time up. Bats again. Right hander Nolan Ryan into action, but it is, and Phil takes a ball in close ball one. Still daylight here at Tiger Stadium. It is 8.48 on the stadium clock. Ryan uh, wheels and deals. Here's a curve across above the knees, one and one. Hear the voice of Mark Pedrich from the far corner of the dugout over there at third base. Fastball under the chin. Two and one, they count on Mankowski. Chalk in close at third on Phil. Two nothing, California in the third. Low inside curve, three and one from Nolan Ryan. A ball outside. He walked him. That'll be the third walk of Ryan. Ryan uh, really seemed to find himself back around 72. Tom Morgan got a hold of him when he was a pitching coach out of California. Worked him out between starts. Got him to take a little off his fastball once in a while. And it seemed to get uh, Ryan in the correct groove. He's walked three. He struck out four and a lot of hit. Here's his first strikeout victim, Fuentes, coming up again. Batting left-handed, Tito, Texas strike, started the month, hit the outside corner on him. Baltimore still leading Milwaukee there in the fifth inning now at Baltimore. one nothing. the Orioles ahead. Set by Ryan in the pitch is a ball outside, a one-and-one one on Tito. and leading the Yankees there in the third, two to one at New York. Mankowski getting a little bit of a lead at first. Ron Jackson holding on the bag with him. The one-one pitch coming up to Tito. Very high and wide. Two and one. Ryan's throwing a lot of pitches here in the early inning. The right hand is set and delivers. Here's a cut and a miss on a pitch that was uh, in close around the knees. 2 2 the count on Fuentes. Tito saying something to uh, Barnett and Humphrey as he steps back into the batter's box. 2 2 the count on him. Waiting on deck, Rusty Staub. Here's the pitch. It's a ball outside. There's that full count again. Boy, oh, that's been up on the board quite a bit already. Mankowski edging off a little bit at first base. Jackson holding with him. 2 0 California. Tito swings and fouls it on the screen. Just got a piece of that fastball. And Ryan deals that fastball. Tito doesn't have time to slide that left hand down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to just get the bat across the plate. <laughs> Waiting on another 3-2 delivery from Nolan Ryan. Here it is. He swings and fouls another one on the screen. He took a little off that one. That didn't have the uh, zip that the last one had. feet six inches from the plate and the ball comes up here 95 to 100 plus miles per hour you don't have much time about two fifths of a second to hit the ball here's a swing and a miss he didn't hit that one it's the fifth strikeout for Ryan and Rusty Staub will be the batter Rusty 
he struck out his first time at bat. They moved the pitching mound back from the plate in 1893. It used to be only 50 feet from the plate. New York had a great pitcher named Amos Rusi, and they figured he threw too hard. They'd move it back. There's a ball outside. Well, all it did is made his curveball a little more effective, and he was even a better pitcher after they moved it back to 60 feet six inches. Ball on the count on Rusty Stop. Man on first, one man down, two nothing California. Ryan sets and pitches. There's a strike call, the fastball in. One and one, they count on him. Snob steps out, as we told you, he was one of the leading uh, Tiger hitters against California pitching last year. Mankowski not getting much of a lead at first base. Stop takes the ball outside. Two and one, they count on him. Now, Rusty choke of the bat, leaning and waiting. Here's the 2 1 serve. He swings, fly ball, lifted to short left field near the line. Rudy coming over to his right is there. He makes the catch, and the holding at first is Mankowski. All the outs have either been strikeouts or fly balls to Rudy in left field. Rudy's had three putouts, and then five Tigers have gone down on strike. Here's Steve Kemp, who took a call third strike to end the first inning. And Humphrey's gone out of the mound to talk with Nolan Ryan. Digging in, the conference is over now. On the right hand Orion sets and pitches. The left hand batter takes a strike outside corner. He didn't like that call by Barnett. Gave him a little bit of the old family look there. Ron Jackson holding on the bag with Mankowski at first base. Here's the pitch. It's a ball high, one and one. We've told you from time to time that Kemp is a very aggressive hitter. Anybody to keep you from being aggressive, it would be the pitcher of the type of Nolan Ryan. Here's the set and the pitch. He backed him off with an inside fastball. Two and one, the count on Steve. Jason Thompson waiting on deck. We're in the third inning, the Tigers and the California Angels. The Angels have a lead, two nothing at Tiger Stadium. Man on first, two down for Detroit. A 2-1 pitch to Kemp. He swings and fouls it away. He got a good ripple of that one. That was the let-up curve. But he beat the ball down on his foot. 2-2 two -two the count on Steve. I don't think I ever saw a more impressive pitching performance than when Ryan pitched his second no-hitter in that the 73 season against the Tigers. He struck out 17. Probably would have fanned more, but he had a big uh, rest in the eighth inning when the California got a lot of runs. Here's the 2-2 pitch now to Kemp. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. He tried to hold up, but he'd gone across. That is six strikeouts for Nolan Ryan. No runs, no hit to walk, no errors. One man left at the end of three. California two, Detroit nothing. You're at the plate in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. Here's the pitch. Who drew the most votes in the first selection of players for the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York? Call timeout to think about it over a cool, refreshing Labatt's blue. The answer, Ty Cobb. Ty Cobb gained 222 votes, seven more than the great Babe Ruth or Honus Wagner. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt's. 
Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt Importers Incorporated, Buffalo, New York. Labatt's Blue is available in selected markets throughout Michigan. Getting it together in the mornings. To use the vernacular, that's what we do in mornings here on WJR. I'm doing my job. I'm J.P. McCarthy. Join me from 6 to 10. You got two in the second off John Hiller. They lead Hiller and the Tigers now 2 0. We move to the fourth inning. Let's all enjoy hearing from Paul Carey. All right, Ernie, thank you very much. It's Joe Rudy to lead it off for uh, the Angels here in the top of the fourth inning against Hiller. It was Rudy who started things going for the Angels in the second inning with his loop single to right field. Hiller looking in, getting the side from Milt May. Into the windup, the left-hander delivers. The curve stays high for ball one. Rudy backing up. Eight home runs, 38 RBIs this year for Joe. As you know, most of them uh, behind Frank Tanana. There's a foul into the upper deck behind the plate. A ball and a strike on Rudy. One of the three long-term contract rich new players possessed by the California club out of that re-entry free agency draft the pitch to him strike called uh, Joe had an idea and then decided to not go after it Hiller with his second start of this season his second straight uh, start did not survive the fourth inning at Texas his first outing last Wednesday Here's the pitch to Rudy. It's high with a fastball. That'll even the count of two balls and two strikes. The Angels getting two runs in the second inning. A couple of loop singles by Rudy and Bonds, and then the one-out single hit very sharply beyond the reach of a riser into left center field by Ron Jackson. Sacrifice fly by Gritch Fowler. There's a swing and a miss. Rudy goes down swinging, and that's the first strikeout for Hiller. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Here's the weather for greater Detroit. Cloudy, widely scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers through Thursday. Low tonight, mid-60s. High tomorrow and Thursday, upper 80s. At a minute past nine, it's partly cloudy and 80. This is WJR Detroit. A cut and a miss by Bobby Bonds on the first offering from Hiller. Now Bonds had looped to single the right field his first time up. Well, Hiller with his first strikeout getting Rudy to open the fourth inning. A little bit low that time, near the outside part of the plate, and it took patience on Bond's part not to go after it. One and one on Bobby. Hiller winds, delivers. Swung on and missed. He was over the top of that off-speed pitch. Ryan is fanning them at the rate of two per inning with a total of six. Nobody on, one down. Top of the fourth inning. A 1-2 pitch. He struck him out. Back-to-back -back strikeout by Hiller. And Bond going down swinging. John has pitched well here tonight. He got hurt by those two little soft fly balls that dropped in in the second inning by Rudy and Bond. The only well-hit ball, a one-hopper into left center by Ron Jackson. So there are two down. Nobody on, and Don Baylor is the play. The pitch to Don. He checks. It's low and inside. Well, the Oakland A's last year, previous to that with Baltimore, on the inside corner for a call strike. Killer has the sign. The 1-1 one -one pitch taken inside. Ball two, strike one on Baylor. Power and speed owned by this man. The one uh, who just struck out about Bobby Bonds, a good example of that. On the inside corner for a call strike. That's a pretty pitch. In around the knees. Now the lineup by Hiller, the 2-2 pitch. 
Line shot foul. That'll reach the facing of the upper deck and get into the uh, first couple of rows in the upper deck in right field. Hope they were ready for that one out there. 2-0. The Angels lead the Tigers here in the top of the fourth inning. Two down, nobody on. The 2-2 pitch. There's a pop-up toward third. Mankowski calling for it, straddling the line. Now Verizer calls him off. He makes the catch in foul territory. A step, and the Angels are retired in order here in the top of the fourth inning. Tigers come to bat in their half with a score. California 2, Detroit nothing. thinking that a car with the comfort and roominess of Volari might be priced beyond reach. That's why we'd like you to know that our six-cylinder Volari two-door coupe carries a manufacturer-suggested retail price of only $3,570, excluding all taxes and destination charges. $3,570 for Volari styling, Volari roominess, and that smooth, steady Volari ride. The kind of ride you'd expect from a big car. Volari, the small car with the accent on comfort, has a comforting price tag, too. Just $3,570. See your Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer today. Well, I'd like to take the opportunity right here before the Tigers bat on the bottom of the fourth inning. Pass along uh, my sincere happy anniversary wishes to my father-in-law and mother-in-law, Pete and Mary Westlock in Saginaw, Michigan, on the occasion of their 56th wedding anniversary. Happy anniversary, Pete and Mary. Here's Jason Thompson to lead it off for the Tigers in the bottom of the fourth inning. Nolan Ryan has struck out six Tigers, but he's uh, had a little problem getting his rhythm. At times, uh, had problems with a breaking ball, others with a fastball getting it over, and he's walked three and uncorked one wild pitch. Tigers have had base runners, but haven't been able to move them around and on in. Thompson walked his first time up. There's a wild one almost, high and wide to Jason. Ryan shrugging his shoulders. Nolan has slowed his delivery. He feels it's helped him a bit. Now they wind up the pitch. Breaking ball gets in. A ball and a strike on Jason. All the windup. And the pitch. It's ball outside. Two and one now on Thompson. Thompson had a big day Sunday against the White Sox with those five RBIs. The pitch to him. Swung on, ripped up the middle of the center field, a base hit for Thompson. Met the fast ball and just uh, set it out over second base. Hit number two for the Tigers. They trail 2-0 here in the bottom of the fourth inning. That brings up Tim Corcoran. Well, Tim is playing his first game ever in Tiger Stadium. Joined the Tigers on the trip at Texas. Called up after a sensational start for the Evansville Triplets where he played first base almost exclusively. He's been used as the DH in one game and then in right field for the Tigers. Slightly open stance. Feet uh, spread wide apart. The pitch to him. It's a fastball outside for ball one. Tim got off to a slow start in Texas. Picked up a hit in his first game in Chicago and that was a long one, a home run for him. And he wound up with three for four and three for four. The pitch to Tim. Strike Got that one across the letters near the outside of the plate. Thompson at first with a leadoff single here in the Tiger fourth inning. Two nothing Angels. Tim fly to left his first time up against Ryan. Leans back. The pitch is swung on a little looper toward center field. It'll drop in for a base hit. Thompson holds at second base as Flores with excellent speed comes in to uh, pick that ball up very quickly. Ball died in the outfield, but Thompson didn't have a chance to go to third. Runners at first and second with nobody out. And the batter will be Milt May. May walked.
walked his first time up. So he got a conference at the mound. Ryan, along with Terry Humphrey, the catcher, and uh, Chalk, the third baseman, in to talk. Tigers with back-to-back -back singles here in the fourth inning. The Angels had the same thing in the second and cashed in a couple of runs. Checking the baseball, Larry Barnett keeping it in play. May hitting 310. Three home runs, 13 RBIs for Milt. With Fuentes batting left-handed, there's a string of six straight, seven straight Tiger batters left-handed against Ryan. There's a wild one, gets off the glove of Humphrey, and the runners will move up. That was a high fastball as Terry didn't quite get out of the crouch quickly enough to grab. It's being uh, ruled a wild pitch, the second by Ryan. He uncorked one in the first inning, allowing Mankowski to get to third base, but that's uh, where he died when Kemp struck out. But now there are nobody out. And Thompson is at third. Corcoran at second. in his first real trouble of the ball game. Oh, he had some trouble in the second inning, too, and Tigers got two on by way of walks. One ball, no strike count. The pitch to May. Swung on line down the right field line. It is a foul ball by a foot and a half. That had extra bases written all over it. Well, that time, Milt got out in front of a delivery by Nolan Ryan little too far. Normally, you don't get around on Ryan that much. Boy, that was going to tie the game right there. Now the outfield has moved. They're beginning to move. Flores have been playing straight away on May, who is known as an up-the-middle hitter. And they're moving to the right on him now. They've opened up the gap in left center field. Actually, in center field for Mill. A 1-1 count on him. Set the pitch to May. He swings and misses. An off-speed breaking pitch that time. May now behind with a 1-2 count on him. Ryan, uh, even with men not on base, has become a more deliberate pitcher this year. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Fastball is high. Two and two. Tiger seeing two of baseball's best. Opposing them on the mound in this series. Ryan tonight. Tanana tomorrow. Tigers will counter with Dave Roberts tomorrow. Here's the 2-2 pitch to May. Bends him back. Ball three. Fastball around the nose. Mickey Stanley on deck. This is the last in the string of left-hand hitters that Ryan has to face in the Tiger batting order. Runners at second and third. Nobody out of three. Two count on Milt. The pitch from Ryan. Swung on and hit off the end of the bat toward third. Chalk charges. Looks at home. Can't go there. Goes to first to get May. And the Tigers get a run home. Staying at second was Cochran. The play right in front of him. Chalk took a look at the plate. Saw he didn't have a shot at Thompson who was going to score. And took a look over his left shoulder at Corcoran to make sure he wasn't trying to advance the third. Gritch was covering for him there. And he went to first to just nip May by a step. So Milt gets an RBI. The Tigers narrow the gap to 2-1 to one and get on the board against Nolan Ryan. Corcoran still at second now. With one out and the batter is Mickey Stanley. struck out swinging his first time up grounder by May was just hit off the end of the bat here's the pitch a little high to Mickey ball one May looking for something with a little more speed that time and he just barely caught the end of the bat with it dribbled it in the high infield grass it's a brand new infield here at Tiger Stadium that the Tigers are coming back to the set, the pitch. 
fouled upstairs. It'll be behind first base in the upper deck. On the batting cage before the game, some of the Angels were commenting about the, uh, well, the length of the grass in the infield, and I explained to them that it's a brand new infield. The other had been taken out completely when the Tigers went off on their 10-day road trip. But it is uh, going to slow some balls down in the infield here. Outside for a ball. Two balls and a strike on Stanley. Corcoran at second. Thompson led off the inning with a single. Advanced to second on the single by Corcoran. Both moved up on a wild pitch. Mays bounced off the third, brought in a run. Set by Ryan. The pitch outside with a fastball. Three and one. On deck is Verizer. Ryan struggling a bit tonight with that strike zone. Got those good pitches that will keep the batters off balance. But he's also been a wee bit inconsistent. Patience is the order at the plate. There's ball four. Stanley draws a walk. So Mickey moves to first. Corcoran is at second with one out. And the batter will be Verizer. That's the fourth walk issued by Ryan. Tommy hit a soft fly to left his first time up. Gets a good size lead at first. Jackson playing behind the runner there. One in the dirt. Good block by Humphrey. That one just simply was badly released by Ryan. It hit out in front of the plate, to the side of the plate. Humphrey made sure he blocked it. Now the pitch from Ryan. Riser takes outside ball two. Time called. Humphrey is going to go out to have another word with his pitcher, Nolan, who is... Having trouble, that uh, plate is swimming around on him. And here comes Norm Sherry, the manager of the Angels, off to talk to Nolan as well. well Ernie passed along a card. Uh, Cosmo Potts. Out of Warren High School, he's got 58 members of the Big Orange Warren High School Varsity Club on hand tonight. The card, oh, the card comes from George Steele. Good friend is the basketball coach out at Warren High. And uh, you know, he and old Cos Potts are on hand with a large group of Warren High. Conference is over now. Norm Sherry's gone back to the dugout. Humphrey wending his way behind the plate. Tigers have runners at first and second. With one out, they've scored a run. A couple of singles, they bounce out on a walk so far in this inning. And activity now on the Angel bullpen, Scott and Drago. The pitch is taken for a strike. That one was right across the letters. It looked like Tommy was going to take all the way. Scott's a left-hander, Drago a right-hander. Loosening in the bullpen for California. The 2-1 pitch. Swung on and popped up foul. It'll drift back out of play. This one will reach the upper deck behind first base. Ron Jackson coming over to watch it disappear. waiting on Nolan Ryan. A 2-2 count on him. One down. Two runners on. The infield and double play depth. Ryan ready. For the pitch to Tommy. He swings and pops a foul into the upper deck. Behind the plate this time. So a war between the mound and the plate continues. Well, we're all looking forward to that Big night coming up Friday night. The 1977 debut of the bird, Mark Fidrich, against the new Seattle Mariners. Now the 2-2 pitch to Verizer. Almost hit him inside with a floater. 
Bo Count again. He has gone to that 3 2 count so much tonight. On deck is Mankowski. One out, runners at first and second. Here's the 3 2 pitch. Check swing, ball four, the bases are loaded. A fastball up around the shoulders. It took off on Ryan. That's the fifth strikeout for Ryan. Tigers trail two to one. They've had the base runners. The Tigers have uh, left four on base in the first three innings. Got a single from Mankowski in the first inning and a couple of walks in the second inning. Both runners stayed there. A walk in the third. Ryan has been able to befuddle the batters uh, just enough. Picking up six strikeouts here in the fourth. Singles by Thompson and Corcoran and the bounce out by May get a run home. Then the two walks to Stanley and Verizer load up the bases for Mankowski. A single and a walk for Phil tonight. Here's the windup by Ryan and the pitch. Strike call. The pitch by Ryan. And Phil would like to see that one again. Bases loaded with Tigers. They trail two to one. The pitch to Mankowski bends him away. One and one. Doing a little scraping around, taking plenty of time. Now leaning on the knees, into the motion. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Wide, 2-1. and one. Time called, third baseman chalk in to talk now with Ryan. And Drago and Scott continue to loosen the bullpen. A uh, one hitter earlier this year. That was against Seattle. Bob Stinson uh, got the only hit off him, a fifth inning single, as I recall. His wind up. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Way high and wide. Almost over the head of Humphrey, but he reached up to haul it in. 3 1 now on Mankowski. I would wager. And I'm not a betting man, but that Mankowski will be taking here with a 3 1 count on him as wild as Ryan has been. The base is loaded with Tigers. On deck is pointed. Here's the lineup for 3 1 pitch. There's a call strike, and Phil was taken. to have that one to swing at, but by the same token, you've got to play the percentages. Chance to get a run in if he's just a little off. And he has been more than a little off here tonight. Here's the full count pitch to Mankowski. He swings and pops a fly ball foul down the left field line. It's slicing and no one will get it. It'll drop in the bullpen. Rudy and Gritch both giving chase down there. Neither could catch up to it. So we come back again to load those bases up. Mankowski may have broken his bat on that one. He's whacking the handle in the dirt. Yep, Phil's going to need a new bat. An exciting uh, moment here at Tiger Stadium. Tigers trailing it two to one. One out with the bases loaded. Ready to go again. Ryan Wines. Here's the pitch. Swung on. A ground ball. They may get two. The Gritch for one. They realize double play. And that's all for the Tigers in the fourth inning. A one hopper. Ready made to Jerry Remy. And they turn the double play 4-6-3. For well, the Tigers in the fourth inning. One run on two hits. They had a couple of walks. No errors. And two runners were left on base. So after four innings of play, it's now the Angels two. The Tigers one. Here's a WJR News Update. Veteran Detroit talk show host and columnist Lou Gordon is dead at the age of 60. Gordon was found dead in his bed this morning by his wife. Cause of death appears to have been heart-related. The struggling American Motors Corporation is a new president. Gerald Myers, who had been an executive vice president, succeeds the retiring William Lunaberg. President Carter discussed the Middle East with Prince Fahd of Saudi Arabia at the White House today. 
In Russia, Soviet President Podgorny has been effectively stripped of all but ceremonial power. The Communist Party Central Committee dropped the 74-year-old Podgorny from the ruling Politburo. A three-judge federal appeals court in New York City has extended until June 1st a ban against landings by the Concorde jetliner at Kennedy Airport. The court scheduled on that date a hearing on the merits of the issue. On Wall Street, the Dow Jones Industrials were down 4.66 today, closing at 912.40. The Detroit temperature, 78 degrees. I'm Jean Fogel. Just so you'll know, WJR presents Town and Country the first thing every morning at 5. This is Jim Garrett inviting you to join Tom Campbell and me on Radio 76. It's the top of the fifth inning here at Tiger Stadium. John Hiller set to face the Angels. They score two to one Angel. Ron Jackson, who drove in an Angel run on the second inning to lead it off. A wind up by Hiller. Here's the pitch to Jackson. He takes a strike. A change up by Hiller right off the bat. The right hand batter, the pitch to him. Swung on and fouled upstairs behind the plate. Two quick strikes on Ron Jackson. He was the number two pick in the free agent draft back in 1971 by the Angels. Worked his way up through their system. Played outfield and third base primarily, but is now uh, playing some first base for the Angels as he is tonight. The pitch to him. Swung on, lined at Verizer. A stab by Tommy. A good catch. He had to time it just right. That ball was taking off like a golf shot was beginning to hook too, so Tommy had to make quite a play on it. One down in the fifth inning. Here's Bobby Gritch, who sacrificed fly to center, drove in the run that is the difference in the game right now. The pitch to Bobby. He takes low and inside, ball one. Gritch, very happy to be a member of the California Ball Club. Got in a miss. Angels extended him, but he wanted to play in Southern California. High for a ball, two and one on Gritch. Uh, Hiller winds the two one pitch. It's low, three and one. On deck for California is Terry Humphrey. And Gritch won his fourth straight gold glove at second base last year. Now, making the conversion to shortstop this year. 3-1 pitch to him. Swung on a fly ball. Lifted to center field. Stanley starts back. He's under it now. Mickey pounds the glove. He has it. Two down in the fifth inning. Nobody on. And then the batter will be Terry Humphrey. Well, the last ten batters have been uh, out. Well, Heller settled down after giving up those two loop singles by Rudy and Bonds and one solid hit by Jackson. That's all they've been able to touch Hiller for. But they have a two-to-one lead. A man from Chickasaw, Oklahoma, Terry Humphrey, waits and takes a call strike. Pitch to Terry. Check swing. It's low for a ball. A couple of seasons ago, you recall that Humphrey was seeing some action for the Tigers and had his season destroyed by George Brett in the collision at home plate. It's low for a ball. on the 21-day disabled list because of that uh, bothersome stiffness in his right shoulder. The date of the disability retroactive to May 20th. That was the day after he started the exhibition game in Cincinnati. That was last Thursday at Cincinnati. And Mark Pedri thus uh, was made room for, and Mark is now an active member of the Tigers. He's been with them and very active, but not officially so. 
But he is now back on the 25-man roster and ready to go in his debut of the year. It's coming Friday against the Seattle Mariners. Here's Tito Puentes, the lead off the fifth inning for Detroit. Tito's been a little befuddled by Ryan so far, batting left-handed against Ryan. He has struck out both times. His old teammate at San Francisco, Bobby Bonds, was chiding him before the ball game about it. High and wide for a ball. He said, how do you expect it? Pull the ball. He, he said that he couldn't do it against Dick Krasuski, who was throwing batting practice. How do you expect to do it against Nolan Ryan? The pitch from Ryan. Punted toward third, but charged by Chalk. He's got it to throw the first, and he got it. Well, that was punted right at Chalk, who was suspecting a punt. Charged in, and despite the high grab, was able to make an easy play out of it. Tito has good back control and has been able to get several punt singles between the third baseman and the mound. One out in the Tiger fifth. That will bring up Rusty Staub. Rusty has struck out and hit a pop fly to left against Ryan. The wind up by Nolan. He kicks and fires inside around the knees. Ball one on stop. Now Ryan rocks on the mound. The pitch swung on a bounce to the first. Jackson waits for it, scoops it up, and trots to the bag to make the put out unassisted on stop. There are two down. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. Checking the weather for Greater Detroit. Fair to partly cloudy with widely scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers through Thursday. Low tonight in the mid 60s. Tomorrow and Thursday's high in the upper 80s. At half past nine, it's partly cloudy and 75. This is WJR Detroit. Here's Steve Kemp. Well, Steve has been a strikeout victim both times against Ryan. He saw a lot of Ryan when he was a youngster out in Southern California. Now he's batting against him. High and wide for ball one. This is the first time he will have hit against Nolan Ryan. This ball game, that is. So far, he's been uh, unsuccessful. Wiggling the bat, the pitch to him. Low and inside, 2-0 and on Kemp. Steve has really been swinging the bat well, upping his batting average to an even 300 coming into the ball game. The 2-0 -no pitch to him. He checks on a breaking ball inside at 3-0. We've not given Steve much to really take a cut at. And a lot of uh, breaking balls and off-speed uh, material. The pitch to him. It's low for ball four. So Kemp draws a walk, and that's the sixth base on balls issued by Ryan. He's also struck out six. And it'll bring up Jason Thompson with a walk and a single. Each club with three hits, but the Angels lead it two to one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. They made a little better use of their scoring opportunities in this game. The only opportunities they had came in the second inning and made the most of them. Stretch by Ryan. Here's the pitch to Jason. Fastball is high. Ball one. Seattle now leads Cleveland five to two in the sixth inning across the lake in Cleveland. Boston ahead of the Yankees four to two in the sixth inning in New York. The pitch to Thompson. There's a strike. A big bender that caught the outside corner. Thompson didn't agree. Game moving along at Baltimore tonight. 1-0 Baltimore over Milwaukee in the eighth inning. Jim Palmer working for the Birds. Strike two called. He worked him outside. That one was inside around the knees. Caught the inside corner. Moving it around on Jason. Thompson with a 1-2 count. Kemp at first, two down in the Tiger fifth inning. The pitch to Thompson. Swung on. A little pop-up in behind short. Bridge is calling for it on the edge of the grass. Makes the catch. That retires the side. No runs, no hits, a walk, no errors. One left. After five innings of play, California 2, Detroit 1. Herbie delighting the audience after five innings here at Tiger Stadium. Ready to go in the sixth inning. Top of the batting order. The first pitch from John Hiller to Gil Flores. Taken for a call strike. And 
One trouble to many for Hiller. There's a tap foul rolling behind the plate. Two quick strikes on Flores. In the second inning, Luke singles by Rudy and Bonds lead it off. Baylor is out on a pop-up. And then Ron Jackson ripped a one-hop drive in the left center field to score a run. A sacrifice fly by Gritch. Got another one home, and that's been it. A pitch from Hiller. Swung out, a fly ball to center field. Stanley starts back, now drops in, and makes the catch. One out in the Angels' sixth inning. That'll bring up Jerry Remy. Hiller has set down the Angels in order in the first, third, fourth, and fifth innings. Oh, except for that second, he's been letter perfect. Uh, Hiller winds, pitches to Remy. He shortens up, takes the strike. Get an offer on it. Got excellent speed, Remy does. Mankowski to play in real tight. Charge the ball. He's on the edge of the grass right now, actually sneaking in on the grass. Strike two called on Remy. 0 for 2 for Remy tonight. Left hand batter, feet close together. The pitch from John. Swung on, hit on the ground to the left side. Cut off by Mankowski. Guns to first. He got him. High grass of the infield uh, slowed that one down just enough for Mankowski to get over and be able to cut it off in front of Verizon. He almost needed to make the play that way because the speed by, of Remy. Well, there are two down. Nobody on, and Dave Chalk at the plate, a right-hand batter. He's popped to second and popped to short. Hiller ready. Delivers. A little high that time. Ball one. John's control has been excellent. He delivers. Strike called. Mixing his speeds well. Around that plate all the time. 1-1 one, one pitch to Chalk. He takes strike two called. Here's the windup by Hiller. The 1-2 pitch. Bounce foul over toward the box seat near the Tiger dugout. Thirteen straight batters have gone down against uh, Hiller. Beginning of the string was the sacrifice fly by Gritch. Cut and a miss. He struck him out. Third strikeout for Hiller, and uh, again for the fourth straight inning, he sets the Angels down one, two, three. Here come the Tigers to bat to give it a try on the bottom of the sixth inning with a score. California two, Detroit one. Listening up to face the Tigers here in the bottom of the sixth inning. John Hiller has pitched a superb ball game for the Tigers. With the exception of that one tough luck inning in the second where the Angels got their two runs and they lead it two to one. Ryan has been alternately wild and uh, and accurate. Uh, he's kept the Tiger hitters off balance for the most part. The Tigers have left men on base in every inning. One in the first, two in the second, one in the third, two in the fourth, and one in the fifth. Here's Tim Cochran, who singled in the fourth inning. He's one for two tonight against Ryan. First pitch of the inning to Cochran is a fastball high. Ball one on Tim. One more with the Angels, and then Seattle will come in for three this weekend, followed by Oakland and Cleveland, a nine-game homestand. Strike. That one called on Tim. It came in above the knees with a fastball. Not much wind here at the ballpark tonight. Pitch to Tim is taken a little low. Two and one. Ryan thought it was in. Had some rain this afternoon in the ballpark area. A little brief shower. Unloaded and moved on. Two one pitch to Tim. He swings and fouls it against the screen behind the plate. Corcoran will be followed by May and Stanley here in the Tigers' sixth inning. Angels came into the game. Tied for fourth in the Western Division with Oakland and Kansas City. Six and a half games behind the leader, Minnesota. The 2-2 pitch to Corcoran. 
inside. It bounced off the plate and up against the chest protector of Humphrey and bounced away. One of those full counts again. Irish-American night tomorrow night. There will be some uh, special ceremonies prior to the game. We'll have the Mullay night on Friday night when the Bird makes his debut. The 3-2 pitch to Corcoran. Swung on and fouled at the screen. He spoiled one off. Oh, Ryan doesn't like the ball he got. Let me get a new one. Corcoran, one for two tonight. Tigers will throw another left-hander against the Angels tomorrow night and Dave Roberts. And the Tigers will see uh, one of the best left-handers in the business, Frank Tanana, on the mound against them. He's won seven times, lost but once. The pinch to Corcoran. Swung on and fouled off the face mask to plate umpire Larry Barnett. That sent him staggering about three steps backward. Ooh, it jammed the... Uh, mask up against his chin. Orion's fastballs and Corcoran just barely kicked it. Enough to send it over the shoulder of Humphrey. Barnett not quite ready to be the arbiter yet. He wants to uh, look, uh, look around. See how things look before he puts that grill work back on his face. Check on the mask, make sure it's all in one piece. Three balls, two strikes on Corcoran. Nobody out here in the sixth inning. Nobody on. Here's the pitch to Tim. All four. He walked him. There's the seventh walk given up by Ryan. Well, the Tigers have had the runners. Are they at least walkers, maybe we should say? Seven of them. Ryan's had a couple of wild pitches. There's Milt May. Third baseman Dave Chalk is looking for the sacrifice. They pitch to the plate, taken for a call strike, and Milt gave no indication that he was going to bunt. Milt often takes that first pitch. Wants to look at what's being thrown. pitch to him. Strike two called. And again, he didn't shorten up. Oh, the hook on May, according to the uh, opponent, says, say that Milk will not bunt very often. The stretch. Here's the set and the two-strike pitch. Swung on a bouncer to the right side. Up with it is Remy to second for one. The relay to first gets away from Jackson. Not far enough for May to advance. It was a poor throw by Grit. Hit in the dirt, so it'll go as a simple force out at second base. It's Corcoran. Well, there's one out with May at first base, and Mickey Stanley will be the batter. Two to one over Milwaukee now in the ninth inning. The Brewers with their last chance at Jim Palmer. They're in the seventh at Yankee Stadium, the Red Sox leading the Yankees five to two. Seattle ahead of Cleveland five to two in the sixth, but that's been out for some time. There's the set by Ryan. The pitch to Stanley. He cuts and misses. Strike one. Only three other games going in the American League tonight. Montreal involved in another long game today. The Expos winning it in extra innings in 13 innings over the Cubs 5-4. to four. The pitch to Stanley. Swing and a miss. He couldn't find that one. At Pittsburgh, the Pirates lead uh, the Mets 5-1 to one in the seventh inning. 
Philadelphia won the Cards nothing in the fifth inning at St. Louis. A couple of late starters on the West Coast in the National League this evening. Here's the stretch. The two-strike pitch to Stanley. It's outside and low, and Mickey held off. Tigers just four and a half games off the pace in the American League East behind Baltimore. Coming into the series with the Angels. To set the pitch to Stanley. He checked in time. Fastball just outside. Two and two on Stanley. the pitch to Mickey. Swings and lifts a foul into the upper deck on the right field side. Ernie got a letter today from uh, Laura Kirkow of Saline, Michigan. She and the whole Kirkow family want to know who played third base and shortstop during the 68 World Series for the Tigers. Said to answer on the air. That was Don Word at third base, right? And Ray Euler and, well, Mickey Stanley played short during the series. That's right. During the season, Dick Krasuski and Ray Euler played it. pitch from Ryan. Check swing by Stanley. Did he check in time? They're going to appeal and he did check in time. Jim Evans, the first base umpire, supporting uh, Larry Barnett's call behind the plate. Ooh, that was close. Stanley almost breaking the wrists on it. The 3 2 count on Mickey. Now, Ryan had had him swinging, missing on the first two pitches, and it's another full count. May at first base, one down. The pitch from Ryan. Swung on. Ground ball towards second. Picked up by Remy. He'll tag the runner. May throw the first. Double play. Throw back to second. Safe at second. Apparently they missed the tag of May. May slid. Went down on the ground. Did not go out of the base path. Remy could not make the tag. And went on to first to get that one. They had to go back. The force was off. They had to go back and make a tag at May at second. And missed him as he dove in safely. What happens is that it becomes simply a 4-3 put out of Stanley at first base. Moving May to second. May did a good job. He was right on the base path. The ball fielded right there by Remy. And May came to a skidding halt, kind of went down low. The throw to first got Stanley in good shape. Here's Tom Verizer, the Tigers with a runner at second and May. Trailing it two to one here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Nolan Ryan looks back at second. The pitch to Tommy. Takes outside. Ball one. The riser is fly to left and walk. Tigers have only three hits. So have the Angels. They've all been singles. The pitch. Strike. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. into the stretch. The pitch to Verizer. He swings and fouls one into the upper deck behind first. Oh, it's a one-two count. The ball popping down toward the Tiger coaching box at first base. Two strikes on Verizer with May at second and two away. And the Tiger six. The pitch to Tommy is a curve on the outside corner. He struck him out. The first strikeout for Ryan since the third inning. But it ends the sixth for Detroit. No runs, no hits, a walk, no errors, and one left. After six innings, it's still the Angels two and the Tigers one. got a tight one going here at Tiger Stadium. It's been interesting. It's uh, primarily been pitching. Uh, the strikeouts and the walks of Nolan Ryan and the excellent pitching of John Hiller who got uh, a little tough luck in the second inning when the Angels got both their runs on three hits, two of them rather tainted and a sacrifice fly. 
It's the seventh inning for California. Joe Rudy will lead it off and back to the play-by-play. -play. Here's Ernie Harwell. Thank you, Paul. This has been a good one. The Angels lead it 2-1. to one. Here's Rudy, who started the scoring in the second. And he swings and misses on the low outside fastball from the left hand of Hiller. Only in that second inning have the Angels done anything. They got their three hits in that inning. And they scored their two runs. Everybody else has gone out in order in all the other innings. They put their three hits together. Here's a high pop ball off of first base. Here comes May. Here comes Thompson in the seat. And it is just out of reach. Two rows in. Right at the corner of the Angel dugout. is the paid attendance just announced by Mr. Bill Brown on our intercom. Rudy waiting on a strike two pitch, swings and fouls one out of play. Well, sometimes the pitcher the next day is charting pitches. I notice Mr. Tanana is over there talking to a young lovely right <laughs> In the corner of the dugout, he's not uh, charting any pitches right now. There's a strike called. He struck him out. Rudy called out on strike. That's the fourth strikeout for Hiller. Bobby Bonds uh, stepping in. He had one of the three hits in the second inning, a single. He also struck out in the fourth. It's a close one, two to one, California. The Tigers scored their only run in the fourth. Singles by uh, Thompson and Corcoran. A wild pitch moved them up. And then a bounce out by May got the run in. There's a foul off the bat of Bobby Bonds. Back to the screen, strike one. Well, we see Dave Roberts and Frank Tanana here tomorrow night in the finale of the series. It's a curved uh, low from Hiller, one and one. John has pitched a very fine game. But the Angels have to lead two to one. Swing and a miss by Bobby Bond. One ball and two strikes to count out it. Milwaukee and Baltimore traded home runs in the eighth inning. Money hit one for Milwaukee for their first run, and then uh, Singleton hit one for Baltimore. There's a little roll of foul over towards uh, Dave Garcia, the third base coach. Greatest we had on that game in Baltimore, the Orioles led two to one in the ninth inning with Milwaukee batting in the first half of the ninth. Boston leads the Yanks 5 to 2 there in the seventh. Cleveland has tied to Seattle. That's 5 5 in the sixth. Here's a ball in close on Bonds. 2 2 the count on him. All three hits off Hiller have been single. Here's a bonding ball to short. Big hop for Verizon. The throw to Thompson. Plenty of time, and there are two down. Be the next man to bat now for the California Angels. Right hand batting designated batter with a foul out the first and a pop up to shortstop. He's hit the ball to the air twice. Henner kicks in the livers. Here's a little looper foul up this way out of play. Into the upper deck. And a gentleman from Toledo will take that one home with him. It takes high for a ball, one and one the count of it. Two runs, three hits for the Angels, one run, three hits for the Tigers, one error to charge for the Tigers. Didn't figure in the scoring. There's a strike called. He dipped the fastball in above the knees. One and two on Baylor. Digging in, standing deep, waiting on Hiller's uh, next delivery. Here it comes. It's a change up low on the count two two. Mankowski deepens at third, the infield all the way back. He takes the ball at the shoulder in close, full count. Like a breaking ball. 
Miller didn't like that ball. He wants another one uh, from the umpire Barnett. First time we've seen this quartet this year. Barnett, Evans, Ocaccio, and Springstead. Here's the pitch. Change up. Hit in the air. Foul back a third. Mankowski racing. So is Barraza. Still going, and nobody can get it. It falls into the bullpen. Barraza had the best shot, but it was just out of his reach. Over where the ground crew sits. Long run for Tommy. He couldn't quite get there. Kemp had an even longer run. And it was uh, tougher for Mankowski because he had to go straight back. At least uh, Barraza had sort of an angle on the ball. And it fell among the three of them. 3-2, the count on Baylor. Wind up in the pitch. Swing and a foul out of play. That one came back and hit May. Pittsburgh leading the Mets 5-1 in the seventh. The Cardinals over the Phillies 5-1 in the sixth. Montreal beat Chicago in 13 innings at Wrigley Field today, 5-4. Other games are late starters. Here's the pitch. Baylor takes a walk. That's the first walk off Hiller. That one got away from him and hit in front of the plate. 16 in a row had been retired by John Hiller before that walk. They've not had a runner since uh, Jackson is coming up now. But singled in the first run in the second inning. Baylor's a good base runner. He's got a king-sized lead over there right now. And it is a ball in too close on Ron Jackson. Up until this inning, the Angels had left only one man on base. Hill is set, delivers. It's a ball outside the fastball. Two and oh, the count on him. Almost no breeze now. It has died. Good night for baseball. This is set. Runner goes. Pitches a ball low for the second. He is out at second base. Now he's called safe as Puentes didn't hold the ball. They had him, and then uh, Puentes didn't hold the ball. Well, Tajo gave the out sign and then the safe sign. It'll be an error charge to Tito Fuentes. No stolen base. Jackson at the plate, three and all to count. There's a let up pitch, it's high. It'll be two walks in a row now off Hiller. It'll be the second Tiger error. that play may will get an assist and it goes in the record book as caught stealing that makes sense to me because he wasn't caught stealing that's like giving a guy an out at the first base when the first baseman pops the ball. give him a here's Bobby Gritch up and he takes a strike call but that's the way the rules are it yeah and I guess what they're doing is is saying that May had him because the call was out. They don't want to have May charged with a, a six stolen base. Well, that's right. That, that's the logic of it, sure. There's a strike call. He got a curve over. Yeah, if he didn't have the problem of the catcher's record of stolen bases and uh, caught stealing, it, it wouldn't right. be there. So, so that's a good explanation. Two on, two out, and it's a strike. Caught, he stood there and watched that one go by. Struck him out. It's the fifth strikeout for Hiller. No runs, no hits. One error, two left. We go to the last half of the seventh inning. The Tigers come in about the Angels, two, Detroit, one. Hi, I'm Ernie Harwell, and I'm here with a couple of competitors in the Chrysler Plymouth Dealers Honorary Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Paul, how does this thing work? Well, any boy or girl between 8 and 14 can sign up in any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer. Provided they're accompanied by a licensed driver 18 or older. That's right. 
and there's no obligation for signing up. Then 22 Bat Boys will be picked on June the 2nd. Right, Katie? Right, 22 winners. One from each Chrysler Plymouth dealer. And everyone who signs up gets a free Tiger Iron On patch. Great. Well, that about does it. So, kids, grab your parents and stop into any participating Chrysler Plymouth dealer between April 18th and May 27th. And sign up for the Tiger Bat Boy Contest. Thank you, Katie and Paul. And this is... Oh, there's one more thing. Yes, Katie? Shouldn't that be that person? Well, anyway, see your participating Greater Detroit Chrysler Plymouth dealer soon. Station identification. This is the Detroit Tiger Baseball Network. At 2 past 10, here's the weather for Greater Detroit. Fair to partly cloudy with widely scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers through Thursday. Low tonight, mid 60s, high tomorrow and Thursday, upper 80s. Right now, it's partly cloudy and 75. This is WJR Detroit. Mankowski will try to get going for the Tigers here in the seventh inning. They trail two to one, each team with two hits. It's been a close one, a pitching duel between contrasting pitchers. Nolan Ryan and John Hiller. And each has done an excellent job. Ryan's been uh, hobbled by control troubles, but he's overcome them. He's walked seven and struck out seven. Here's Mankowski. And he looks at a strike. Bill has a single. He's walked and hit into a double play. He double play in the fourth inning. Baltimore hung on to beat the Milwaukee two to one. Palm of the winter and Augustine the loser. Here's a foul out of play. Got that pitch down on the hands and fouled it upstairs in section 16. Strike two. The count on Mankowski. Don't forget the same two teams go at each other tomorrow night. Dave Roberts against Frank Tanana. Battle of left-handers. Hope you'll be out here with us. Here's the pitch. It's a ball in too close. Off day Thursday, the Tigers resume action Friday, and do they resume it with the Bird making his 77 debut? Fidrich against Abbott. It'll be Demole night. And tomorrow is Irish American night at the ballpark. Now Ryan was ready, then he backed off the slab. One and two, the count on Mankowski. What a job he's done filling in for the injured Rodriguez. Both with the bat and the glove. Ryan making him wait. It's the one-two pitch. In too close for the hard curve. Two-two the count on Phil. Tiger three hits. Mankowski, Thompson, and Corcoran all singles. California three hits. Rudy and Bonds and Jackson all singles. Here's a fly ball, hit back at shortstop, little pop by Gritch going back, Rudy coming in behind him, it's Rudy, the left fielder, that makes the catch. The Tigers have hit a lot of balls uh, weakly up in the air, popping into short left field, not getting around on that fastball, and the left hand is hitting to the opposite field, popping to short of the short left. Here's Fuentes, he struck out twice, and bounced the third on the bunt. Batting Tito Fuentes against the hard-throwing right-hander, Ryan. There's a strike. Looked as if he wanted the bump, but he didn't go for it. Chalk is charging in from third. On Nolan Ryan, the young Texan kicks and deals. It's a curve over, but low. One to one on Tito. Scoreboard show will follow our broadcast. Paul Carey will be here with all the scores. Be sure to stay tuned. In the motion, pitches. It's a ball in close. He's trying that curve again around the ankles. Two and one on Fuentes. Ryan has walked seven and struck out seven. Miller has walked two and struck out five. He didn't walk anybody in the middle of the seventh when he walked two in a row. There's a fly ball to center field. Backing up Flores. Still going. Still going. Reaches up and makes the catch on the run. Good running catch by Flores. He was playing shallow. Tito got good wood on it and hit it fairly deep. 
So there are two down, and that'll leave it up to Rusty Starr in the Tiger seven. Angels lead the Tigers two to one. That's about the longest ball the Tigers have hit tonight. has struck out, hit a short fly to left, and bounced the first base unassisted. Now Ryan checks his sign with his catcher Humphrey, and Rusty takes a strike, fastball over. Another strike that would hit the inside corner on a check swing. California, a couple of games under the 500 mark overall, but uh, at night they are five over the 500 mark, 17 and 12. Now, two strike count on Rusty Stop, two out, nobody on in the seventh. He takes a half cut and holds it. It's a ball. A curve dipped in around the ankles. California 2, Detroit 1. We're in the seventh inning at Tiger Stadium. Angels got two in the second. Tigers got one in the fourth. All the six hits in the game have been singles. Three per side. There's a ball in close. Another curve. 2-2 two, two, the count on Rusty. Rusty trying to get over those uh, back ailments. Still not 100%. Now Ryan checks his sign again. The 2-2 two -two pitch is on the way. He swings and strikes out. Curveball fooled him. That is the eighth strikeout for Nolan Ryan. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. At the end of seven, the Angels 2, Detroit 1. Doug McAnally goes to work as a roustabout in the Yates Oil Field in West Texas. He doesn't work alone. He gets together with other marathon men like Leon Gentry, Phil Lemons, and Ernie Galindo. And together they go about the business of getting crude oil out of the ground. Doug McAnally could work alone, but the job wouldn't get done as well, or at all, without the help of Leon, Phil, and Ernie. Because each of them can do something the other one can't. So they get together to do it better. A company's like its people, because it is people. When Marathon found oil, our oil people got together with some pipeline people, who got together with some refining people, who got together with some service station people, so we could do it better. We got together. got together to do it better. Hi, this is Frank Beckman. Glad you joined the club on Radio 76. Just a reminder that whether it happened on or off the field, we'll have it for you on the sports final. Evenings at 11.15 on WJR. the Angels to bat now in the eighth inning. They're leading the Tigers two to one. It'll be Humphrey, the former Tiger, batting number nine in the California order now. He's 0 for two tonight against his old battery mate, John Hiller. Bounce to short, bounce to third in his two trips. Angels are three and seven this year against left-handed. Here's a bunt attempt by Humphrey. It's back of the plate foul. However, they've won three out of the last four against left-hand pitching. In theory, you'd think that a catcher could uh, hit an old uh, battery mate about as easy as anybody because he's caught him and very familiar with his repertoire, what he might throw up there and how he does it. Here's a bounding ball to third. Mankowski gobbles it up. The throw to Thompson gets him, and there's one away. is uh, working in the bullpen now, and so is Drago. Going on the 
same theory we mentioned. He might think, well, the catcher could hit better than anybody because he sees the ball come up there the same way all the time. Same way as a batter would. But it doesn't seem to work that way. Here's Flores, the leadoff man. And he backed off from a changeup, ball one. Flores has bounced the first, popped it short, and hit a fly ball to Stanley in center. Two to one, the Angels lead. We're in the eighth inning. There's a check swing. Let's see if it's a strike or ball. Yep, the first base umpire Evans says he went through on that one. One and one to count. Here's a foul fly out of play. It'd be interesting to know how many times out of ten, for instance, that an umpire first to third rules a strike or a ball. I'd say most of the time he uh, doesn't uh, say he goes across. Here's the one-two pitch now coming up to Flores. It is in the dirt, bouncing away from May. Two-two, the count on Gill. Well, the Yankees bumped in with four in the seventh inning. They now lead six to five over Boston at the end of seven. Here's a ball low. Two pitch. Swung on, base hit left field. A soft line drive over shortstop, and that will be the fourth hit for the Angels. And the first one off Hiller since he allowed three in the second inning. Jerry Remy, left hand batting infielder, steps up now. Seattle and Cleveland in the eighth inning, they are deadlocked at 5-5 over there. Easy toss by Hiller over to first base, the runner back in time. Steve Gurley starting to heat up in the Tiger bullpen. In close to the curve, backed him away. Mankowski playing inside the bag at third, almost to the inner grass. Well, he's really to it, but they've got it to cut out over there at third base on this diamond. Ground crew's done a good job on the uh, newly made infield. There's a little pop foul off a third. Mankowski backing up. He's there. He has it. And the runner goes back to first base safely. Flores, he was way down the line. I don't think Mankowski realized that. And I really don't know what Flores is running for anyway. The ball was foul and he, he didn't back up. He was... I don't know what he was doing down so close to second base. Anyway, he got back and there's two out. And the batter will be Dave Shaw. Chalk hole for three against the left-handed Hiller. He's popped the second, popped the short, and the last time up struck out. There's a ball low. Good stop by May. That ball hit in front of the plate. Pittsburgh leading the Mets there in the ninth inning at Pittsburgh, five to two. The Mets have fallen on uh, tough times. It goes ball high, two and oh, the count. Cardinals out of the Philly, six to three in the seventh. Houston and L.A., no report on that one. Atlanta, San Diego, no report on that one. And the pitch. He takes ball high, throw to first. They've got him in a rundown. Flores stops and throws into Fuentes and makes the tag, and he's out. The catcher to the first baseman to the second baseman retiring the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. And at the end of seven and a half innings, California 2, Detroit 1. Okay, let's put a few nickels in the machine here and see what comes out. Ted Strasser weaves patterns and music Sundays on Radio 76. 
Do you remember Bobby Sox, Lindy Hops, and Warm Summer Nights? Remember joining the gang at your favorite hangout? Remember 78s and more big bands than you could count? And remember Pearl Harbor and Omaha Beach, V-Mail and VJ Day? And uh, from all indications we got, there's a lot of tape being used this morning on uh, uh, tape machines as uh, folks try to capture some of these things that are pretty hard to come by anymore. Patterns and Music, Sunday morning, 8.10 to noon on WJR. Need instant runs. They trail two to one. Ryan has not been as uh, sharp as he often is, but he's been tough. He's had his strikeout pitch working. He's fanned eight. He's walked seven. He's allowed the three singles. And the Tigers cut him for a run in the fourth inning. Now they'll send up Kemp, Thompson, and Cochran, the three left-hand swinging Californians, in the middle part of the batting order. Kemp is struck out twice, walked his last trip. Vance trying to clap up a rally here in the Tiger eighth inning. Two to one, California. Ryan's gone all the way. Kirkwood and Drago in the bullpen for the Angels. There's a high foul. It'll be out of play. Drifting into the upper deck, back of the Tiger dugout. Now bounce down right in front of the Tiger dugout. Strike one, the count on Kemp. Be out here tomorrow with us. Enjoy big league baseball, sports best bargain, right here at Tiger Stadium. And on Friday, the bird comes back into action, facing Seattle. Here's the strike one delivery. Kemp takes the ball wide, the one and one, the count on him. It'll be Roberts and Tanana pitching tomorrow, a duel of left-handers. Here's the motion and the 1-1 delivery. Fastball on the inside corner. Oh, Kemp didn't like that one. It almost hit him. And I think that's about as hard as Ryan has thrown tonight. One and two, the count on Steve Kemp. He's walking around in the circle now to the first base side of the plate. Left hand on his hip, holding the bat in his right hand, not quite ready to get back in. Leading it off in the eighth against Nolan Ryan. Steve Kemp waiting, man to pitch. He swings a little roller, hit the first base, and go foul. Love down there by Jackson and foul territory right in the coach's box. We've got a final now. Pittsburgh uh, beats the Mets five to two. Royce the winner, one and five. Matt Lack takes the loss. He's three and four. Oh, the Pirates defeat the New York Mets. Their first night final from the National League. One and two, the count on Steve Kemp. And the pitch on the way. He swings and misses, got him on a fastball. The ninth strikeout for Dolan Ryan. Jason Thompson will bat now. He's walked, singled, and popped the shortstop. Tiger's only run came in the fourth on a single by Thompson, a single by Cochran. They moved up on a wild pitch, and then Thompson scored when May hit a ground ball to third baseman Chalk. Stanley walked below the bases, but uh, after the walk to the riser, Mankowski hit into a double play. The walk to uh, the riser that loaded the bases, and then Mankowski hit into a double play. Ball one outside on Jason. Ryan ready, winds and delivers, and Thompson swings it. They pop up foul back a third. Chalk chasing. He's there, and he has it for the out. Two down, nobody on. The Tigers still can't get to Nolan Ryan. Young Tim Corcoran will be the batter. He fly to left, single and walk. One for two for Tim. Wearing no 
Norman Cash is all number 25. Cochran got his start at Bristol and Lakeland in 74, then Montgomery the next two years, and started this year at Evansville. Swings and fouls it away. Out of play, back a third. Tigers signed him as a free agent off the California State at Los Angeles campus. Tim spreads out at the plate. Ryan delivers. There's a ball outside. He fed him a fastball. One and one the count on Corcoran. Tigers had a single in the first inning and then back-to-back -back singles in the fourth. They've not had a hit since then. And the pitch. Swing, fly ball, left field. Rudy going over to his right and makes the catch. He fell down, but held on to the ball. It looks as if he might be having trouble with the lights or something, or maybe he just slipped. Anyway, he caught it. And it almost got past it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We go to the ninth inning. California 2, Detroit 1. You're the designated hitter in the Labatt's baseball trivia game. Here's the pitch. Which Yankee batter holds the team mark for the highest batting average in a single season? Think it over, over a cool, refreshing Labatt's blue. batting average in the season for a Yankee is held by the Bambino himself, Babe Ruth. He hit 393 in 1923. Great moments in sports. Everybody has their favorites. Great baseball calls for great beer. Labatt's Blue. Call for Labatt. Brewed in Canada since 1828. Distributed by Labatt and Porters Incorporated in Buffalo, New York. If you're listening to Radio 76 in the afternoon between 3 and 6, what you're going to get is the afternoon music hall. Mark Avery inviting you to be part of it here on WJR Radio. California ninth inning, the Angels ahead with two runs, four hits, and no errors. The Tigers have one run, three hits, and two errors. Chalk for three. He was at bat when uh, Flores was caught off first base to end the eighth inning. Left-hander Hiller delivers. It's a foul out of play off the mid of May. Hiller has uh, been brilliant tonight. There's no question about that. Two Texas League singles set up the scoring in the second inning. Rudy led off with one, then took second on a single by Bond. Both the same variety. And then after Baylor fouled out, Jackson single in the run, and the sacrifice by Gritch got in the other one. Here's a fly ball to right center. Stanley digging, dives, and he can't come up with it. Chalk makes a big turn, scoots on back to first base. Great effort by Stanley. Got his glove on the ball, but as he slid, it got underneath him for a base hit by Chalk. That'll be the fifth hit off Hiller. been a very tough hitter against the Tigers. Stepping in. Right hand batting outfielder. Kirkwood and uh, Hartzell are throwing in the bullpen now. For California, the Tigers have really uh, back in their bullpen going to work. Now, time called by the first base umpire, Jim Evans. Here's Rudy stepping in. And he bumps the ball down toward third base. Fielded by Hiller, comes off the mound, gloves it throws to Fuid, he's covering the bag at first. It is a sacrifice moving Chalk to second. Manager Norman Cherry trying to play for that one run at a time. He's got a one run lead. He'd like to get another one. Runs have been hard to come by for each team in this game. That'll be a sacrifice. The play will go the pitcher to the second baseman covering the bag at first. Well, 
Fletcher are going to put him on. Bobby Bond won't get a chance. They'll walk him with the first base open. Choosing to pitch today as Baylor and try to get the double play. Crawford begins to heat up in the bullpen now alongside uh, Steve Gurley. All the Tigers have a right-hander and a left-hander throwing out there. And the walk is uh, being given now to Bobby Bond. There's ball four. That'll be the third walk issued by Hiller. Baylor has this batting record so far. He's fouled a first, popped the shortstop, and uh, drew a base on ball. Angels two, Tigers one. Ninth inning, the Angels threatening against Hiller. They've got two men on and one man down. Only in three innings have they had uh, any runners. There's a strike on the inside corner. The Yankees lead Boston in the ninth at New York, six to five. Set and the pitch. He swings and misses on a high hard one toward the outside. Well, this one's been close all the way. Two for California in second. The Tigers bounce back with one in the fourth off Nolan Ryan. And it has gone scoreless since then. In the ninth inning now, Hill is trying to set him down. One out and two on for the Californians in the set by John. The left-hander looks to second. He pitches. Change up. Popped in the air. Back goes uh, Thompson. He's there. Infield fly rule is called. He makes the catch. The runners hang on. That will uh, bring up Ron Jackson, the right-handed batting first baseman, who singled in the game's first run the second. He's one-handed to Perez, who jumped up in the fifth inning and drew a walk in the seventh. The Phillies in the ninth inning, seven to five at Philadelphia at uh, St. Louis. There's a high foul out of the ballpark, way over the grandstand back at third base. Strike one, the count on Jackson. Shock at second. Bonds with a big lead at first base. But Thompson playing behind him. And Jackson swings and misses on the chain. Way out in front of that pitch. Hiller, when he starts, goes out with a philosophy that he'll throw as hard as he can for as long as he can. And so far, he's gone into the ninth inning. Uh, John uh, checks his sign with Milk May and the pitch. Swung on as a long foul fly. Deep left field, way back upstairs. Scrambling around in section 10 for that one. Two on, two out. Strike two, the count on Jackson. Comes he swings to the bounding ball to Barraza, deep short, charges it, gloves it, throw to first. In time, high throw, Thompson reached up and gloved it. Oh, Hiller out of trouble in the ninth. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left. A hand for John Hiller as he comes in, a magnificent pitching performance. And we go to the last half of the ninth inning, Angels two, Tigers one.
Creek with the station identification. This is a Detroit Tiger baseball network. Look for fair to partly cloudy weather with widely scattered afternoon and evening thunder showers through Thursday. Low tonight in the mid 60s. Tomorrow and Thursday's high near 90. At 10:30, it's clear and 70. You're listening to WJR Detroit. off in the ninth against Nolan Ryan. He's gone all the way in this duel with John Hiller. He holds the upper hand, two to one, the Angels. May drove in the run with a bounce out the third and the fourth inning. He walked from the second his last time up in the sixth inning, hit into the fourth out. Ryan has set down the last nine the Tigers in a row. Left hand batting, milk May at the plate. And he takes a strike, a high, hard one. Strike one, the count on Milk. Stanley and Verizon are scheduled to follow in the Tiger ninth inning. Ryan rocks and pitches, and May takes a strike. Oh, I didn't like that call by the plate umpire Barnett. Strike two, the count on Milt. Ryan's walked seven, he struck out nine. The wind up the pitch. Fastball wide, way outside. He let that one fly. Foucault throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Hartzell throwing in the California bullpen. Now the one two delivery with May leading out for the Tiger Knight. He swings and misses, struck him out. Now well, that's 10 strikeouts for Ryan. And he goes one up on that record now that he had uh, tied Sam McDowell for the most, uh, well, maybe that's 10 plus. Maybe they mean 11 by that. I guess they do. you got to get one more before you can break McDowell's record of 74. Hired with McDowell. I think what they mean is double figures, uh, so? 10 uh, or more. I'm willing to give it to him. Yeah. Here's Stanley. That's 10 in a row for Nolan Ryan. Mickey takes a strike. Uh, fastball let her high. Ryan tried to hold off the Tigers. Ron LaFleur has come to the on-deck circle to bat for Verizon. One out in the Tiger Knight inning. Here's a strike on the outside corner. as if uh, Ryan sniffs the old victory here. He's getting tougher. Putting it all together. Two to one, the Angels lead, ninth inning. Nolan into action again, and the pitch. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. He just blew it past him. Now well, that's 11. Seventy-five times he's had uh, more than ten to break the old record that he shared with Sam McDowell. Now Ron LaFleur is the Tiger hope as he steps in. LaFleur batting 238 in 33 games. Humphrey goes out to talk with his pitcher. Tigers have had not too many chances against Nolan. They left a couple of runners on in the fourth inning when the inning ended in a double play after they'd scored a run. That was their best shot at the fire balling right-hander. Here's LaFleur at the plate against Nolan Ryan. Two to one Angels, ninth inning. He backs him away. Ball one the count. Mankowski waiting on deck, hoping that LaFleur can keep the game alive. Batting for Tommy Verizon. And he takes the ball outside, taking all the way. Eleven in a row have gone down before Nolan Ryan. The wind up from the pitch, it's in for a strike. He got the outside corner, two and one on Ron. Ryan's thrown a lot of pitches tonight. They've had that full count quite a few times. But he has been tough when he's had to be. Now, not quite ready, and uh, LaFleur decides he'll step away from the plate. 
Back in now. Here's the motion by Nolan Ryan of the pitch. Swing and a ball upstairs. She got a piece of that one, and that was all. Two to the count on the floor. Ryan struck out uh, three in the opening inning after a leadoff single by Mankowski. And he's trying to get uh, three strikeouts in a row here in the ninth. The climax is pitching performance tonight. Two to one, the Angels lead. Two down, nobody on. And the pitch. It's a ball outside. He checks his swing. Full count. back of the outfield there around the right on Ron LaFleur. Waiting on a 3-2 delivery. Here it comes. He swings and misses. The game's over. And California wins the opening game of the series. 12 strikeouts. For Nolan Ryan, he struck out the side. 1-2-3 in the ninth inning. And the final score, the Angels 2, the Tigers 1.